Hi there, welcome to Exam AZ-900, Microsoft Azure Fundamentals Study Guide. This is Episode 9 of 63, Azure Resource Manager. My name's Tim Werner. I'm happy to be your instructor. Our objective for today comes in the AZ-900 objective domain, first under the heading Understand Core Azure Services, then Understand the Core Azure Architectural Components, and finally the granular skill is to describe Azure Resource Manager architecture. As always, I know you've heard this a lot if you've been following this tutorial series sequentially. You can go to timw.info forward slash az900 to download an Excel workbook of these exam objectives. Of course, you can always go to the exam az900 page at Microsoft Worldwide Learning. That should be your source of authority. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into the subject matter. What is Azure Resource Manager, sometimes called ARM? According to the Azure Docs, Microsoft calls ARM Azure's Deployment and Management Service. So whenever you're deploying or creating resources, whether those resources are databases, web apps, virtual machines, whatever, it's taking place in the context of this fabric of APIs. Specifically, Azure Resource Manager is exposed as a single namespace of resource providers. The namespace starts with Microsoft and then it proceeds down the list. For example, the Microsoft Dot storage resource provider is the namespace that has all of the actions that you can do with storage account create, read, update, and delete, sometimes called CRUD. Now, I always have to remind myself that AZ-900 is not necessarily a technical certification. So all I want you to know about REST APIs is that representational state transfer is probably the most common and popular programming paradigm nowadays because it allows you to use the hypertext transfer protocol, HTTP, or HTTPS for security, to perform CRUD operations on data. An application programming interface, or specifically a REST API, is just a series of operations that all take place over HTTP. And because HTTP, HTTPS is such a universal protocol, these application components can communicate without fear of being blocked by firewall software, and let's face it, as human beings, how often each day do you interact with HTTPS? Pretty much every time you open your smartphone and browse to a web page or you look at an email that has rich data. What I want you to learn in summary or in short is that ARM Azure Resource Manager gives us a consistent management layer. You can see in the diagram I have it right on the slide that we have up on top the various management tools, whether it's the Azure Web Portal, Azure PowerShell, the cross-platform Azure Command Line Interface. You can actually interact with the ARM REST API directly using various REST clients like Postman, if you've ever heard of that. Application developers, all they need to get productive writing and reading Azure Resource Manager is to load up the appropriate Microsoft Azure Software Development Kit. All of those are abstraction layers that fundamentally communicate with the Azure Resource Manager REST API, and that's all authenticated calls. You can expose some of your resources anonymously. I think I touched on that in the previous lesson, but everything by default is secured with role-based access control, or RBAC. I'll show you a bit about how this works in our demo. Here we are in the Azure portal, and as I said, the Azure portal is simply an abstraction layer on top of the underlying Azure Resource Manager REST API. There's a web application, it's in public preview, and it has been in public preview for many years. You'll know exactly what the preview means by the end of this course. It's one of the last lessons we'll do. But if you go to resources.azure.com and you sign in with your account, this is again authenticated and specific to your subscription in your Azure Active Directory tenant, as you can see over here on the right, we're able to tap into the ARM REST API at a pretty granular level. Notice that the tree allows us to show any providers that we're using in our subscriptions. We alternatively can browse through our subscriptions and underneath the subscription scope, you have your resource groups and in your resource groups you have your resource providers and ultimately all of your individual resources. Now again I have to hold myself back from getting too deep into the technical weeds. The way that Azure represents all of this data in Azure Resource Manager is using a data format called
called JavaScript Object Notation, or JSON, and that's what you see here in the main body of this page. And what makes Azure Resource Explorer so powerful is that you can put it into read-write mode, and you can actually do not only data retrieval, but you can actually do data actions. You can create resources and delete resources all through this interface, sending various HTTP methods, get, put, post, delete, etc., etc. That's about as deep as I want to go with that right now. If you are an application developer, you probably have a pretty good idea of what I've been talking about. If you're a non-technical person and you're thinking, Tim, what did you just show me? I just want you to understand the highest piece, that ARM, Azure Resource Manager, is a collection of these resource providers. It's a single namespace that begins with Microsoft. And regardless of what tool you're using to interact with Azure Resource Manager, those tools are just abstraction layers on top of underlying HTTPS calls to the REST API. Now, why don't we create a storage account so I can show off in a compact, concise way some of the major selling points or features of Azure Resource Manager. A storage account is a general purpose cloud storage object. The general purpose storage account stores four different types of data, as a matter of fact. We don't need to worry about the specifics here. I'm just going to call out certain things as we go through. First thing we do is always choose which Azure subscription and which resource group we're going to use to contain that resource. I have a resource group already created called AZ900. I'm just going to give this a name. It has to be globally unique, so I'll add a few pseudo-random numbers on the end. We choose a region. We talked about regions earlier in the course. This is going to be dependent upon where your customers are and what your data sovereignty policies are. I'm going to leave all of this at the default and skip ahead a couple pages. Again, leaving everything at the default, I'm going to pause here. I've mentioned in passing that not every resource, but the majority of Azure resources support these taxonomic tags. And these are key value or name value pairs that can make it a lot easier for you to do governance. For example, you might require that all of your teammates associate a tag, say creator or created by, and then you can use, in this case, I'm using my first and last name. And by applying tags this way, you can then report on those tags, not only for cost management, but just resource lifecycle management purposes. So let me click create, and in a moment, the storage account will be created. What just happened kind of quickly there is that when I clicked create, the instructions written in JSON, as you can see here, if I look at the template page of this deployment, go into Azure Resource Manager and are validated. And if I put in an input value that was illegal according to the Azure Resource Manager schema or rules, then Azure would have stopped me and not let me submit the job. It did validate correctly, so it's going to go through and go through the steps, as you can see here, and we can follow along its progress. Cool, so deployment is complete. We can go to that resource directly. As I said, another thing we can do if we're using taxonomic tags is that we can search resources based on those tag values. And here, if I want to round up all of the resources I've attached this creator Tim Warner tag to, I can simply collect it or click it rather and then in this case go to the storage account that contains that tag and if a resource supports tags I can always add new tags remove tags using the trash can button etc now these operations especially when you're doing a change or an update are going to require a certain level of permissions in your Azure subscription so if we go to access control IM and if I go to add add role assignment this is what's called role-based access control Azure has a whole bunch of predefined roles that convey various levels of power. Contributor is actually a pretty powerful role. But let's say I have a colleague, and his name is Jason, and I want to give him contributor access only to this storage account. We use the controls here, and we can verify under the role assignments blade. We can come down, and we can see Jason Reader has contributor role access. There's a lot more to say about role-based access control that we'll get into in the future. Lastly, there's something called resource locks. Now, the locks in Azure are not so much a security measure of Azure Resource Manager as much as they are a sanity check. For example, if I click Add, I'm going to call this Delete 
lock. And you could make this lock either so that the resource is read only, which isn't very flexible for a storage account, or I could just make it a delete lock. This is going to prevent somebody from inadvertently or intentionally deleting that storage account. So what I'm going to do now is open a new in private window and log into portal.azure.com using that JSON account. Of course, I know the password because it's a student lab account. I have multi-factor authentication or Azure MFA enabled, so I'm going to have to whip out my trusty smartphone and put in my code and click verify to complete that challenge, and ultimately I'll be taken into the portal. Now, one thing about role-based access control security is that you can only see resources that you've been given access to. So notice that I'm not able to browse entire resource groups. However, if I go to the storage accounts blade directly, I do see just the storage account because I was given contributor access to it. Now watch this. I am a contributor, and I can verify that, of course, by coming over to Access Control IM and doing an access check on my name. I can just type Jason's name, and we can get a report and verification that Contributor lets you manage everything except access to resources. Again, Contributor is a pretty powerful role. You want to be careful about it. But watch this. If Jason decides that we're going to dispose of this new storage account, watch what happens. Can't be deleted because it's a lock. Aha. I said that lock provide a nice sanity check in Azure Resource Manager, but they're not foolproof or fail safe because as long as Jason has the capacity to edit or remove locks and it looks like the contributor does not have permission, I would have to come back to my other browser here as Tim at TimW.info. I'll have to come into the lock, come all the way over to the right, hit delete, and now it's unlocked and Jason should be able to delete that resource. So let's step back to storage accounts, select the storage account, delete, we're asked to confirm, and the delete proceeds. That's role-based access control, locks, taxonomic tagging, and resource groups, core principles of Azure Resource Manager. For learning resources, head on over to Microsoft Learn, the Azure Fundamentals Learning Path, and read about Azure Resource Manager, timw.info forward slash ARMF is the short link. Then in the Azure documentation, they have an excellent 100-level ARM overview. That's at timw.info forward slash ARMDEF, A-R-M-D-E-F. Great. Well, I hope you found this lesson insightful. Thank you so much for joining me. You can follow me on Twitter at Tech Trainer Tim. You can view my Pluralsight courses. I have lots and lots and lots of Azure content as well as my friends and colleagues do. TimW.info forward slash PS. And then my website is techtrainertim.com. Happy studying. See you in the next episode.